Is Cassie going to be the one to bring Diddy down? Holy sh What's poppin'? It's your boy, Mike Powell. Thanks for clicking the video. That's DJ Beans. Beans, Cassie dropped a bombshell Thursday, November 16th, 2023. In the suit, and I do have notes over here. Let's run through it real quick. Cassie claims that Diddy, who she met in 2005 when she was 19, he was 37 years old, abused her physically and sexually over the better part of 10 years. Now, it's a new law in New York, which I guess gives adult victims of sexual abuse a chance to kind of skip over that statute of limitations, opens back up the window for them to get restorative justice through the means of the legal system. And Cassie decided to jump through that loophole, filed a $30 million lawsuit against Diddy, amongst other things. She said, Beans, that Diddy beat her severely for years and years and years. Uh, and one of the more stunning revelations in this lawsuit, she claims that over the course of the relationship that she had with Diddy, that there was times where she was made to have sex with male prostitutes. And that Diddy was in the room and that Diddy would pleasure himself while this was happening. He would film it. And she was made to go on websites looking for male escorts. Cassie further claims that Diddy used drugs to gain control over her and obviously dangling the fact over her head that he's Diddy and he has the power to make or break her career. Right. So I think she was on bad boy for a minute. They was, they had a relationship. I think the world kind of knew about it. It was kind of off and on. Right. Like at that time, Diddy was allowed to do whatever he wanted to do. I think is what it was. It didn't seem exclusive and she could do what she wanted to do. Okay. So Benjamin Brackman, we got to say this off bat. Diddy denies all allegations. And these are just allegations. United States, a person is considered innocent until proven guilty. So let's start right there on the disclaimer side. But Diddy's lawyer, a guy named uh, Benjamin Braffman or Ben Braffman has said that Diddy denies all allegations. And he also says that Cassie tried to extort Diddy out of $30 million saying that she was going to write a tell all book and that she was offered eight figures in order to calm down and she rejected that and now she coming out going for the whole 30 million initial thoughts well i mean first of all if if it was a money grab you know would she have uh taken that eight figures in the first place so first of all my personal opinion don't want to accuse an innocent man of course but as somebody who has firsthand witnessed abusive relationships from the mental to the physical her reports of a lot of the things just describe an abuser to the t and we got to sit back and we got to look at the rumors of diddy's past how many rumors that are so similar to things of gay acts and abuse and um you know spanning to death and all sorts of things how many things can be rumored before eventually everything in the dock comes to light? Let's also keep in mind that, like you said, you know, he's in control of her money, all this other stuff. Somebody who's young and, and just starting to come up, it takes a lot to come forward as an abused woman for many, many reasons, from embarrassment, from things like, you know, what are the repercussions going to be to my career and to me as a person, especially knowing how much money he has and money is power. Um, the voyeurism and stuff like that. We we hear a lot of doc stories, unfortunately, in not only the music industry, but the movie industry and stuff like that, that men that are in a certain place of power, and especially somebody who's got that abusive mentality, eventually they need more when they can run stuff. So all this to say, if you read the reports and everything that she was saying down to the times that he beat her, you know, he would seclude her from her family and her support systems because he can't seem like the bad guy. It can't come out publicly. All these things are, are, are to the T what an abuser does. I personally, I believe her. And I don't think that this is going to end 
quickly. This I is... think that Cassie just busted open the doors for many other women to come forward. Well, this so... is this is the big deal right now. This is the big deal right now. When you're talking about a guy like Puff, you're talking about somebody who obviously rumors have been flying around about him for years, um, whether it be pseudo gangster things that he did. Remember, he uh, was accused of beating up his son's college football coach over at UCLA. Um, Exhibit did an interview where he spoke about some of the things that he witnessed being around Diddy. We get to this club, and then we walk in the back the back way. It's a VIP lounge. Ain't nobody in there. And then, you know, the club is going. It's all jumping. And then I'm sitting there with, with old girl. So, I, so, so then, so then, so then uh, you know, he, he's dealing his business. We go down and get a drink. You know, we sitting there bobbing to the music, and then he say, she point over the corner. It's two dudes kissing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, the fuck is this? It, it's turning more like into a surviving R. Kelly, surviving Hugh Hefner. We've seen all of this stuff go down. And so now it's going to be a contingent out there that's going to say, listen, years later, the Me Too movement, why is she coming after him now? Trying to go for the money grab. Okay. So first of all, Cosby. 30 year old allegations. I'm not saying who guilty, who's innocent. You make your decision for yourself. Okay. R. Kelly, I know at least one woman that was in the movie. She met him. She was 35 years old, staying in the house, defecating in buckets. He's on tour. You didn't leave. I don't understand all of that. I'm not saying he didn't do some bad things. We all know what happened with the Aaliyah situation. The justice system has handled that. Diddy, different situation. Because so much stuff has almost bubbled to the surface with Diddy, and it seems to almost always go away. So let's go with this revelation. Also, that's in this lawsuit. She was dating Kid Cudi in 2012, right? And Diddy found out, she says, and he got upset and said that he was going to blow up Kid Cudi's car. Mr. Combs, this is from the lawsuit. Mr. Combs told Ms. Ventura that he was going to blow up Kid Cudi's car and that he wanted to ensure that Kid Cudi was home with his friends when it happened. That's wild. That's wild. Oh, Around that I... time, Kid Cudi's car exploded in this driveway. He tells Cassie he's going to blow up Kid Cudi's car, what the lawsuit says. And Kid Cudi's car blew up in his driveway according to the lawsuit, which might all be bullshit. Except Kid Cudi told the New York Times, nah, that's true. Now, now when you say smoke, fire, yeah, we got a whole inferno brewing right now with Diddy. We will get to the Keefe D thing in a minute because this is all happening all around the same time. All these arrows coming at Diddy. So, he blew up, according to the lawsuit, allegedly, according to the lawsuit, he blew up Kid Cudi's car. Now, when you say it takes a while sometimes for all the people out there, because I don't I'm not convicting this man. I'm not the judge. I'm not the jury. I don't know the facts of the case. But as you quite eloquently stated, Beans, sometimes it takes survivors of abuse a while to come forward. And I want to say. In relation to that comment, it took Tina Turner forever to talk on Ike. Took her a long time to say something about it. And I'm sure in the industry, people knew. Now, another thing, another thing. If Puff's lawyer is being truthful and saying Cassie was trying to extort Diddy for several months, I hope you got some text to back that up. I hope you got some emails and some evidence to back that up. And we're not talking about just a regular guy living on a block. We're talking about a mogul with some of the best attorneys on the planet. I'm a mogul, best attorneys on the planet. You start coming at me with something that has the potential to make me lose millions of dollars to get me locked the fuck up. I'm recording everything the fuck you're saying. I'm going to keep some evidence so I can show everybody, look what she tried to do to me, right? So, and then she didn't take, you said it was eight figures. So we talk about what, $10 million. And now you said she's coming for the 30. Conversely, when we talk about Cassie, not saying it's an allegation true or not, let me say this. You said that you went on websites at Diddy's, at Diddy's instruction so you could find male prostitutes 
to come have sex with you because that's what Diddy wanted. Can we find some of these male prostitutes who partook in these sex acts when Diddy was in the room? Because I know they know who he was. If they was in the room having sex, they know who he is. Are they going to come forward? Will they be called to testify in this case out of New York? That's going to be very interesting if male prostitutes come in there and corroborate her story. And we got more stuff about uh, about Diddy, right? Uh, it's a clip of young Jock that came out. He saw this 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 white woman. It was bottles on bottles on bottles around her. It was lit. Puff jumped out. Me and Cassie sitting next to each other. My wife right here, Cassie right here. The nigga jumped off the bar, came over and said, yo, yo, Cassie, tomorrow, I want you to shave the side of your head. So when I look up there, this white woman's side of her head was shaved, my nigga. And the bitch looked good with it. So I was looking at Cassie, I was like, well, I, I was like, you're not about to do that, are you? She said, well, I mean, whatever Sean wants, I'm gonna do. And even crazier, a video has just popped up online recently with this psychic medium, a Miss Chloe type, named Sloan Bella, dropped a video in June of this year. 2023, saying that she was communicating with Kim Porter, Diddy's ex that's now deceased. She died on November 15, 2018, from pneumonia. And the psychic is seen on cameras live communicating with Kim Porter. So she's saying, I'm communicating with Kim Porter. And this is what she had to say. Showing. November of 2023. So her death date was November 15th of 2018, but I'm being shown November of 2023. I don't think we're done with this. I feel she's shaking her head yes. Before she stare at me, then she wait, and now she's shaking her head yes. I am being shown that things are being prepared. She is showing me a trumpet. People are standing straight up. And there are people going to speak, not just about what happened to her, about other things. Something is unraveling. For some reason, she's showing me like, was one of her kids, I wonder, in band? Because she's showing me like trumpet marching band type music, which is weird because I don't think that that's her favorite. But I'm being shown that. Somebody is leading the march, leading the way there. That's what it is. Somebody is leading the march, leading the way to uncover this information and I'm getting five months. So I feel, I feel, I feel, sorry, I keep laughing because she's like out with it, out with it. Toxic metal exposure. Personal, private, written, handwritten documentation about what was said to her three months before she passed, what she witnessed, and the final straw that she couldn't take anymore. And it's not a case of domestic violence. It goes far beyond that and that. So it is domestic violence, but it's far, far beyond that. So she goes in a completely different scope. Five months. The time is being marked. Five months. So this is June. June, July, August, September, October, November. I'm going for November 15th. Or right around there. It's coming out. It will not be. You cannot keep. this. She's literally. You cannot stop the truth. She called the day to the fucking T. She said November 15th. That's I got chills like a motherfucker right now. She nailed she it. She nailed so, it to the T. And that video came out in June of 2023, where Sloan Bella said that Kim Porter's telling her from the afterlife that something is going to pop off around Diddy November 15th or 16th, 2023. And the fact that she said there's going to be a leader, boom. So this is this is why my my prediction is 2026 surviving P Diddy is going to come out because here's here's the thing. Like I said, I'm not incriminating him either, but what I am predicting is going to happen for real. So like you mentioned, the male prostitutes are going to come forward. You see, eventually bodyguards come forward and say what they've seen. So in this instance with Jock. It's grooming. So if, if you know about the R. Kelly shit where he actually had one of the girls looking like a young boy, these are this is all grooming. 
And when you have this fear, it doesn't matter. You can be the strongest person in the whole world. When, when you have somebody that is essentially mind fucking you and grooming you, how many times has it come up that people think that Diddy had her killed? That has been talked about very openly in the past. A lot of people. And then they talk about the fact that I'll be sure who was connected to Kim Porter. That he was in the hospital on death on his deathbed. They said that he would maybe was writing a book about something that had to do with Diddy. They're saying that everybody that was, I don't follow this. Everybody writing the book about Uptown, but apparently a bunch of people was writing books about how Uptown got started, where where Diddy really got his start in music. And all those people they're saying are all dead right now. You know, Bad Boy is an interesting case. Because let's just say, first of all, music side of it. Let's just say music side of it. Incredible legacy, bad boy. Tons of hit records, changed hip hop, really did a lot to change R&B. But don't have one solid artist to hang your hat on the way Motown could have hung their hat on a guy like Smokey Robinson. Smokey Robinson was around. He had a long ass career. He could tie a lot of that back to his time at Motown. You look at Diddy, 112, we in and out. Faith Evans, we in and out. Black Rob, we in and out. Craig Mack, we in and out. Biggie, God bless the dead, right? Uh, did I say 112? Total, day 26, Danity Kane, uh, Loom, Mace, <laughs> Mace. G Depp. Right? It's an All awful the, lot of legends. The locks, I mean. The locks, like all of these people. Were the locks on Bad Boy? Yeah, they were. I right? do I think yeah, yeah, that was the whole. Yeah, because they gotta get they publishing back from them, right? Collabs, so right, right, all right. All of these artists that really they could tie their beginnings to Diddy and Bad Boy, but they you, they can't say. Diddy and Bad Boy strengthened my backbone and made sure that I was fed for the rest. There's no legacy there. So just on that end, even Bad Boy is weird. Let's move on to, I want to say his name right, because I don't want this guy to come get me, Keefy D. Right? So, Keefy D. Because this is the other thing that's happening in the puff right now. Like, when it rains, it pours. You thought yesterday, if you had a chance, you... You switch places with Puff in a heart. Oh, yeah, I wish I had Puff life. Not today. You don't want his life. Not today. No. Because Keefe D has been saying for years, and apparently everybody want to listen right now, that Puff was the guy that ordered the hit on Tupac. So here's, here's what's crazy with this. I mean, we know Keefe never should have sat on Vlad's couch, but the bottom line is he has said that the million was offered to him, but it has been recalled multiple times that Zip, Eric Vaughn Zip, Diddy's right hand, who is well known for keeping other people's money, he pocketed that million dollar check. So it never even made it to Keefe D. Uh, Puffy gave Zip a million dollars that was supposed to be handed over and Zip ended up keeping it. And I remember when I interviewed T.K. Kirkland, who was actually roommates with Zip at one point. They were that close. He actually said, yeah. The fans said, said that too. He said that, that shit actually happened. Well, the story that has circulated was that after Tupac got killed, Puffy allegedly gave the money. I heard. To, to Zip. Yes. And Zip was supposed to give the money to, to Keefe in there. Yes. But he never gave the money to but him. But thank God he never gave him the money, right? Think about it. If he gave the money, Puffy would be in prison now, money for hire, a murder for hire. So thank God, if, if, if this is a true story, I, I'm not saying yes or no, but if he would have gave him them the money, it'd have been a murder for hire and Puffy would be locked up. Oh. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, Zip, Zip had a history of ripping people off. Yeah, he never ripped me off. Well, never, otherwise I mean, he wouldn't have. Did, did he technically do? I mean, if he kept the money that yeah. Supposedly. Be true. <laughs> so actually, he yeah, did yeah, you yeah, off yeah, for a million. Yeah. 
Yeah. If, if that's what happened, yeah. They sure said it. The FBI said that. The people really? down, yeah, that's U.S. Crazy. attorneys, all of it, they said that. He be doing so much talking about this case. And I mean, you got a guy who came right out and said, and Keefe's a Southside Compton Crip. He said he ordered the hit during a day out in New York over pastrami sandwiches and pink champagne. Keefe said that Diddy told him, quote, I need to speak to you, big dog. And the, and the two of them went to the side to talk. And Keefe wrote in his book, I'm able to smell and see fear. Puffy was full of fear. He said, Keefe then alleges that Diddy said, I have a couple of problems I need to be handled. One, big CEO, Suge Knight, and Pac. And then Keefe said that he told Diddy, that's not a problem. We can make it happen. That's in Keefe's book. That is a full-blown snitch. I'm not saying Keefe's a snitch, even though that's what I just read, him snitching. I'm just saying, the action is a full-blown snitch. He telling on himself. He telling on Puff. If he's not putting himself at the scene of the murder, which he's done on in a different occasion, I didn't read the whole book. If he ain't putting himself at the scene of the murder, which he already did, he's certainly putting Puff at the head of the conspiracy to have Tupac killed. And also, please look at all of the people who are now coming forward. We got people like Snoop Dogg coming out and being like, fuck it. Like, I'm willing to testify against Diddy at this point. Like, that's... Wait, Snoop said he was willing to testify? So, direct words, not not verbatim, but he said at this point, he said he's in his 50s. Like, what the fuck is he going to sit there and lie for? Like, there's people, him and Mike Tyson, they feel bad, and they have this they 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 feel bad that they weren't there to help him at times like that. But from what um, some of these interviews are alluding to, is Snoop's like, "Fuck it, I don't care anymore. I'm a grown ass man." Listen, Shug then, got a podcast now, which pisses me off because everybody Shug? got a podcast. I'm not hating on him, but everybody got a like. I'm pretty sure my mama got a podcast. I just don't know about it. But the, the Shug got a podcast from jail, and he. And doing big numbers, salute, right? He's doing big numbers, but he telling everything. He telling that. So now is Suge gonna say what he knows? Like he got well, hit with a bullet. Right. But but Suge has also, I think like TMZ, remember, had um had asked directly, they had called him or you know, had him call whatever from jail and directly said, you know, Keefe D is saying he was there. And Shug was like, I played Pop Warner with, with Keefe. Like, nah, he wasn't there. He wasn't there. Like, he was very, very firm at, like, they said, so, so you know, would you testify in court? And he was like, no, they're not going to call me to testify. They're not going to call, they're not going to call me to testify. No. So let so, me get this straight. So let me get this straight. Shug says Keefe wasn't there when Tupac got shot. Keefe says, Keefe was. Keefe himself. I mean, he said he said when with the the first shot hit because you know Suge got skimmed. He said I thought Suge was dead in multiple interviews, mind you. Keefe had said that too. He so. also said that he, I don't something about he would have took the shot if he could or something like that. Right, but he wasn't in position. I think that might have been when he blamed his nephew because the, so the way because Keefe has contradicted himself also in many interviews. So way the the way that they described how people were sitting in the vehicle, I think that's why he said he wasn't the one that was the shooter. And here's the other thing: didn't they they blamed somebody else too? And and it's so easy to blame and and throw the blame on people that are dead because that's the thing too is that the majority of these people are dead. So nobody can really, really confirm other than Suge and Keefe. And so many different stories have been about who actually pulled the trigger. Keefe is now under arrest for this for being tied to this murder, right? Two things gonna happen. He gonna plead guilty, which I believe he's already pleaded not guilty. But he gonna plead guilty, or number two, it's going to trial. So he, he gonna have to. He more than likely gonna have to get on the stand to defend himself. It's a murder case, 
So when you get on the stand and start defending yourself, what are you going to say? Right. The police is going to have evidence. They're going to have your statements. They're going to have your Vlad interviews. They're going to have your book. You got to square the circle when you get on that stand. So my prediction, he's going to name who did the shooting, who ordered the shooting, because he's going to say, I was there, but I didn't pull the trigger. I don't think he's going to be able to not put himself in that car when that shooting happened. I mean, that look, and he has been real heavy on the whole being very open about Diddy owes him for all the protection and shit that he's given him. So he's in a, a very big fuck Diddy stage in this whole situation. Um, and there's also the, the pr whole proffer agreement that is, is set. But when they raided his house, they took all the YouTube stuff. They took the Vlad interviews and all of that. So where he's constantly contradicting himself, I think when it really, really comes down to it, you're a thousand percent right. And I think that, I think I think it's gonna come down on Diddy. And here's what I day. think. No disrespect to nobody set. This Keefe guy don't seem like the the brightest bulb in the pack. Burnt. So they went and raided his house. If he was there, he had anything to do with it. I'm gonna guess they're gonna find evidence at this man's house. Bottom line is when he gets on that stand. And he talks about his involvement or non-involvement in this thing. Will he repeat what he said so many times in the past, which is that Diddy was the one at the head of the conspiracy, that Diddy wanted Pop dead, that he called the shot, and that he paid somebody a million dollars after the completion of what we are now being told was a hit. You got the Cassie thing is a lawsuit. The Cassie thing is a lawsuit is civil. But let's wrap this up and say, let's go to this part of it. Is Diddy about to be canceled? What about all the people that have projects with him, that have uh, brand partnerships with him, people that got records coming out with him, labels that's associated with him? What's about to happen? Because we saw, we listen, we see what happened to R. Kelly. We saw what happened to Bill Cosby. They went to jail. Uh, Russell Brand recently, big time accusations. Steven Tyler, accusations from back in the day coming forward. A lot of people coming out and is the Me Too thing has not stopped. And I don't want to say whether or not somebody is guilty or innocent because these are serious charges. God forbid, as a grown man, somebody accuse you of doing something that you know you did not do. And of course, that could be a possibility in this case because we were not there. But looking at the history, then we also have one more allegation from another woman who Diddy dated that said, Diddy beat her. Um, he had caught me texting another man. We was in Miami and um, it got really crazy that time. Uh, um, we was upstairs and he, he had like, we were in his closet and he like pushed me and I fell to the ground and, um, and then he got, he like stood over me. So I was like laying on my back and he stood over me and he started like punching me like this, like he avoided my face, but he like started punching me like on the side of the, my head and I was just like covering my face. So it's a long, it's a, it's a track record of a bunch of different allegations that now Diddy apparently is going to have to defend unless they settle this thing before it goes all the way, which could certainly happen, that they might end up up in a number and shutting this whole thing down, in which case this particular thing goes away. But, but when you look at one of the major allegations in this lawsuit, Besides Diddy just treating somebody bad and making them have sex with prostitutes. She claimed Diddy raped her. I think in 2008, I think and they were- sex was, traffic too, right? She called it sex trafficking because she was made to go different Oh, with places. the male prostitutes, right? Right, yeah. right. So we got a rape allegation. We got a full blown, like they were broken up. She said he broke into her house. And he raped her. 
which if true is despicable. So what I will say is this. I haven't known Cassie to be, I don't know too much about her, but I know it's a lot of women out here that love to get on camera and talk a lot of stuff. The girl messing with the guy blue face. Every time I scroll my IG, I see something about her and blue face going back and forth. Krishan is what her name is. All these other, right? I never see Cassie doing nothing messy. Am I wrong about this? I just never, I never see her out and about trying to get clout. I don't see her, you know, trying to take people down. This is a thing between Cassie and a man named Diddy. Ask yourself, is there smoke? Do you have enough information about Diddy's history to conclude that this lady is telling the truth? Me, I'll just say it like this. Sounds credible to me. I can't convict the guy, but it sounds credible to me. I hate to see it happen. But if that's what you did, you got to pay the price. You got to pay the price because you can't be out here victimizing women. And I know it's a whole thing. Oh, all these women coming out the woodwork. Fine. But for women that's telling the truth, which I don't know what the truth is in this situation. But for women that's telling the truth about going through abuse for a minute, physical and sexual, justice must be brought to bear on those individuals that's fucking guilty. And that includes Puffy, too. It's about the top of the industry right now. You're talking about a legend. You're talking about an icon. Could it possibly be that Cassie could be the one to bring down Diddy in this moment? Last word, Beans. 2026, Surviving P. Diddy. What the fuck was popping is your boy Mike Powers.